My name is Dr. Jeffrey Moore. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon based out of Oklahoma City. We are here today to discuss SI pathology and ways to treat it, such as SI fusion. The sacroiliac joint is the area where the sacrum or tailbone meets the ilium or the hip bone, and it is connected by ligaments, and it normally does not provide much motion. Generally, SI joint pain is caused by degeneration of the SI joint and arthritis that's associated with it. And even though it's a joint that does not move much, any sort of motion in an arthritic joint will cause a significant amount of pain. When I see patients complain of SI joint pain, they usually complain of pain near the top of their lumbar spine, sometimes hip pain, other times pain that radiates down their legs. Painful activities for patients with SI joint pathology can be almost anything that involves motion at the waist or hip. Lifting things up, bending, twisting, any sort of everyday activities can really irritate this problem. Some of the activities that they tend to do that helps alleviate pain are putting weight on the unaffected side, laying on the unaffected side, or using support stabilization belts that can help alleviate some of this pain. Initially in practice, I did not often include SI joint dysfunction and pain in my differential diagnosis. It wasn't until I spoke to other young surgeons who integrated SI joint fusion into their practice that I realized that this was such an often misdiagnosed and common problem. It can be up to 15 to 30 percent of low back pain patients that have SI joint pathology. Patients who suffer from SI joint pathology do not have a specific imaging finding like they would in lumbar pathology. Therefore, it's very important to do a full physical exam, such as a Fortin finger test when you ask a patient where it hurts and they point specifically to the top of their SI joint. And certain provocative maneuvers will really elicit SI joint pain. These include maneuvers that put stress on the SI joint. And if the patient complains of pain in a very specific area, then we know that the SI joint could be very problematic. Additionally, diagnostic blocks are very important in diagnosing this pathology. When patients are diagnosed with SI joint dysfunction, we do not automatically jump to surgery. In fact, we always try conservative measures that are non-operative in nature. These can include physical therapy, support belts, certain injections that decrease the inflammation around the joint, as well as ablations, which may deaden the nerves in that area. Only when these patients have failed these non-operative measures do we move towards surgical intervention. When performing the IFUSE procedure, we make a very small one to two inch incision. From there, we place three implants into the SI joint using an x-ray machine. This threaded implant is made from 3D printed metal, which is designed to mimic the actual bone of the body. Therefore, we get quicker bony and growth and immediate stabilization of the joint. Following the IFUSE procedure, which takes approximately an hour, the patient either goes home that day or goes home the next day. They are protected weight bearing on that lower extremity for several weeks. Then we have them follow up, and based on their recovery, we let them return to work as soon as possible. The iFuse system has over 60 published journal articles that are peer-reviewed regarding the safety and effectiveness of the device. In my experience, these patients do very well in a very short period of time after the procedure. Because SI joint pain dysfunction often goes misdiagnosed or undiagnosed, and chronic low back pain is so common, if you feel you have SI joint pain or dysfunction or suffer from chronic low back pain, we'd love to see you in our office for a full evaluation. Thank you.